good boy, Jay. It's a good dog. You're a good boy. There we go, buddy. Good girl, Po. Good dog. That's a good girl. Ducky. Duck. Eat up. Eat up. In the box. Leave it, Pace. Eat up. Hey, Bruno, not for Bruno. Good boy, Pace. Bruno, not for Bruno. Bad dog, Bruno. Good dog, Pace. The Bruno's still your tucker, did he? Hey? He's still your tucker. How you going here? You see that? Bruno just stole Pace's tucker. And who's gonna argue Bruno? He shouldn't do that. But as he's got older, he's losing a lot of his commands and he's beginning a little bit, oh, say, senile. I know how he feels. Anyway, yeah, uh, we're smashing into another day here in lockdown. I'm just going to show you what we're doing today. Hope you enjoy this video. Compost. It's something I don't have very good on the farm. I've got two here. This is one compost bin. It's got a bit of rabbit guts in and some, no, oh, I don't know, just general shit. This one here's got, uh, gee, it's got something growing in here, which we don't really want. What's that, an onion, is it? Hmm, might plant that in the garden. So, oh, that's a bit of garlic. I might replant that out, actually. And this one here. But we need a decent one. This is our garden that we've uh, sort of prepped. This end here is all clay. I like clay. Do you like clay, mate? He's a good bastard. But things don't grow so well in clay. And we need a place for our compost, so I'm going to sacrifice this bit of the garden. I've already started with one post hole here and marked it out. We're going to put one piece of timber right across here. And we're going to start another hole up here. I've just started on that one there. And one up here, which I've started on. And we're going to put three posts. And we'll connect up that post over there. And then we're going to use timber. And we're going to make a corrugated roof on top of it. It's going to be a comp compost. This is going to be our compost area because it gets sun and it's a good project for you too, Daniel. I'm going to go and pick up some horse poo that I saw when I was on my bike the other day. It was cheap and get some essential items that we need for eating too on the way. We're living off our garden, so in a way our garden is an essential item. I've just uh, cleared around this tree here, I'll show you. This is a uh, avocado. They're expensive plants. It was $52. Don't you pick it, mate. Yeah, I hope he's not uh, going to actually pick the plant. I've just cleared around this, so I'm going to build it up again and put some fert in the ground. It was uh, $53, and I've had plastic cover around it. I'm going to take it off and re-put it back on again. And I've got a visitor, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's me, mate. Essential items have just been dropped off by Redneck Joe. Oh, mate. What's that, a bit of uh, rig? Oh, too much. 
Food deliveries. We can't go fishing. What else? What's that, bud? Fed us a back stage. You fucking beauty. Look at the fat on that. Yeah. Holy fuck, mate. That's awesome. What a good bastard. Sausies. So sausages are all for Daniel because I don't do sausages, but the fucking fish is for Clay. Those venison, I'll try one of those. What's in them, Buzz? Any bread in those or not? Yeah, no, it's honey and hickory. Oh, yeah, can't eat those, can't eat honey, but hey, thank you. Yeah, fucking good, man. Oh, I've got to feed Daniel here anyway, but all that stuff there, I'll stick it in the freezer. Oh, I'm giving you a virtual handshake from two metres. Good on you, man. Awesome. That was Redneck Joe. What a good bastard. And that's the thing about New Zealand hunting community, we all look after each other, and the fishing community too, in fact a lot of community look after each other, particularly in these rural places, good bastard, he's a uh, special mate, he doesn't even have like Facebook or anything, I've got to actually phone him, he's old school, very very good at his job, he's a tree planter, I think his record is, I know his record is uh, 1800 trees in a day, so if you're planting pine trees you know what that involves, when everybody else puts 300 on their back, he puts 400, and he's a good bloke to hunt with too, he had pace his brother, Tragically, a year ago, tragically, his brother took his own life. Glenn, we had a long talk. He said, you got to do something, Clay. There's an epidemic of suicide in New Zealand. And the majority of people doing it are men. It's a much higher rate of men doing it. Same in Australia, too. He said, you got to make a video or something. I thought, fuck, I'd already done one about that. And that went viral on everybody else's channel, not mine, because my channel's pretty much... Uh, restricted because of the hunting content community guidelines do that so that's why I don't show a lot of gutting of animals and dressing out now because I get pushed away all the time but that was good that the first one I did it went viral I've had three videos that have gone viral all on other people's channels nothing on my own it says a bit doesn't it so I, I made this video and it didn't go viral it, it got but it got a lot of viewing still it got 80 odd thousand views in the first two days on YouTube and basically it was about if you're in trouble, if you're in a really bad place, and the thing is when you're in a really bad place, of course you don't want to talk to people. If you're in a bad place, make sure you try to reach out, and if you're someone who suspects that your brother or someone's in a bad place, make sure you do your best to try and contact them and get talking about it. Just pick up the phone if you're in a bad place. I got a lot of people writing back to me saying it, it did well. I did a uh, talk on, I was at Seven Sharp, I don't have television, so I don't know. I actually saw it later, someone sent me a YouTube clip and those guys were good, so they broadcasted it through the country, and I also heard from Spencer that they got played in his school, and a number of other kids said, oh, we saw it in our school today, so they played it through the schools in New Zealand, trying to put that message out there, but it didn't bring, didn't bring uh, any real sense of relief myself, because not long after I did that, I lost one of my dearest young fellas, my favourite, you know their favourites, well, he was my favourite, he took his own life, so... Do what you can. Right, off to buy some essential items. Uh, dogs. Dogs not been hunted, so they're not eating so much. Their food's a little bit less, but still got to keep the chickens fed. Got to keep ourselves fed, and those sorts of things. I just really warms my heart, and I really appreciate that. And I'm humbled by guys like because he's got a family, he's got his own children, a redneck Joe, and he's there giving to me and I, I feel really I feel very very humble by those acts of kindness and it just reminds me that uh, there's a there's a good good thing going on too while all this horrible stuff's going on and I hope you guys wherever you are in your own challenges and struggles during lockdown whatever's going on I hope that you've got some community around you and if you don't it's probably a really good time now to get on that phone and just call people because if they're in lockdown chances are they've got the time to to talk with you too and just catch up I've been, uh, when I had time, I've actually been quite busy during this lockdown but because I've been making a lot of content for people. But I think it's really also important to just do your bro checks and your sister checks through social media. It's a great tool. Do some FaceTime and talk. Right, let's go and see if this chicken poo, chicken poo, horse poo is still there. This morning, Awe had done her walk with her dog and she sent me a photo. It's still there then, so hopefully it still is and we can buy it. It's been sitting there for a lot of days, so no one's using it, so... I think everybody's had a good chance to get it, so hopefully old Clay can get it. Right, we're in luck, still there, bloody good. 15, 16. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's fourteen dollars. Oh, they're good heavy bags. Jeez, it's a heaps. Three. That's a big one. And four. That's a really one. Oh, they're getting bigger. Lucky last. They've been sitting there for a while, haven't they? There's no grass growing under them. It's a tenner. That's a Sir Edmund Hillary. It's a uh, five. Gonna go in there. Come on, eat it up, eat it up. Cool. That's another dollar. Sixteen bucks. Two dollar tip. I don't know why they hadn't sold. They've been there for ages. Not sure why they hadn't sold. They've been there for a long time, obviously, because the dirt it was a uh, yeah, the dirt was like dead under them. They've been for a while. People drive past and don't have gardens. Horse poo. It's good value. Two bucks a bag. That's our supermarket in Mapu, and a big shout out to all the staff there for working during this time. I don't think I've ever been so excited about horse poo. It's funny when you've got a garden and things like that. If someone had told me even three, two years ago, you'd get excited over a bag of horse shit, I would have just laughed at them. But it's funny how things change, and COVID did that. Right, we're going to go and uh, scan our phone and get some cream. And I'm going to pick up some stuff for Are We Too because she doesn't want to go to the shop. So going to do the double shop and that's the thing if you can shop for other people it's even better look what i've just found um tell us about your dog mate oh well, i came with the house i was renting and now here i've only had him for about eight months yeah and yeah he's very sweet he's deaf a lot of dogos are deaf he wasn't going to let me near the van when i come up he's a good guard dog yeah yeah no he is he's very sweet yeah, he's yeah. a lovely boy how old do you reckon he is Apparently he was five when I took him over, so he'll be nearly six, or about six. My guess is he's a dogo across America, and he's got the split head classic dogo, but he's so wide that when he stands up in the front, he's got more like the American. He's got scar so. tissue on his head, though. Is that from being oh, a pig dog, or is yeah. that from what? No, 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 he's just spent, just spent his life on this property that I was living in. Right, good one, so. mate. Well, I hope lockdown street and you're good, and nice, thanks for coming up so good, eh? <laughs> Excellent. Cheers. <laughs> That's pretty much what uh, it looks like when you're on a keto diet, and that's actually a wee gift for Arwe. Can drop that off, and some cream cheese and cream and butter. So surgeons, heart surgeons for years have been telling their patients to have low fat because saturated fat is not good for your heart and it can cause clogging up, and they're absolutely 100% right, of course. However, Dr. Glenn Davies of the Taupo Medical Centre, GP of the Year Award, he did a talk on my channel. And what Dr. Glenn Davies said is that, yes, saturated fat is bad for you if you've got a heart condition, but it's our bodies that make it from sugar, fructose, and refined carbohydrates. They produce saturated fat. So if you change your diet and you get rid of all that, then you can actually eat saturated fat. It doesn't accumulate like the stuff that you grow inside your actual your body makes itself, if that makes any sense. That's interesting, isn't it? I'm on a very high fat diet, and cholesterol is not really the issue. Inflammation is the issue, and that's caused by all the shit food. People don't really want to hear about it, but, man, I've spent a lot of time studying it, reading about it, looking at science peer reviews, and... The jury's, the jury's got that one, they've all voted yes, that's the problem. And we're going to see more of that in the future. But right now, of course, it's changing our ways. And that's what uh, Glenn Davies is doing right now, doing talks around the country, where he was until lockdown hit us, and that to put an end to that. But there'll be more of it. Hello, Nala. Hey, Pepe. Right, we're going to place that for our when she's left a cup of tea for me. Happy days. Because cream is fat, you can have it on keto, and that's probably enough. Anymore, I'd go out of ketosis, about a tablespoon. So, 
My neighbour, who used to be my landlord, has just uh, pulled up with this old thing. Tell us about it, mate. Tell us the history of it. Uh, well, Grandad was a pretty keen gardener, and he lived up in the house on the top of the property. Yeah, right. He bought this, Jesus, when I was a kid, so it must be at least 30 years old. Easy. Right. And he got it for doing his gardens, and it's basically just been sitting in a shed for the last... Jesus, I don't know, maybe 20 years or something or other like that. Shit. So I got it going about six months ago. Yeah. To do a friend's garden. Yeah. And I uh, haven't really been doing anything with it since. And I was going to chuck it into storage. But I suddenly remember old Clay here was uh, yeah. doing a heap of gardening. So maybe you could use it. Fuck yeah, mate. We've been doing it all by hand. So you reckon we'll be able to get it going? Like I said, had it going six months ago. Yeah. Uh, tried to get it going the other day at was resilient but probably just needs like it like the spark plugs looks pretty original yeah P could probably do with a new belt because yeah. the um, belts are a bit fucked eh um the adjusters all the way up i got as much oh, out of yeah. it as possible yeah true that yeah uh, the tank's got a bit of gunk in the bottom of it i'll clean that I out some old fuel well probably yeah, went we'll, off in it yeah we'll get the old fuel out of there um i did check the oil down there it's pretty good but it does leak a little bit oh yeah so Oh, we'll do some work on that to get going, mate. You're a yeah. bloody champion. Um, champion. The on-off doesn't work so well on it, so I constructed this little idea. Oh, yep, that's the on-off, yep. On-off, onto there, grounds it out. Oh, okay. Turns it off. Does it give you electric shock when you do it? No, nah, the core's not big enough for yeah. that. Yeah, so it's probably only like a little six volt thing or something or other like that. You've been crawling under the house, you've got cobwebs in your head. Oh, me and the young fella just went over to the shed yeah. over there because there's another one of these oh, is over there. But it's just the engine and it's a three horsepower. Can we look at that? Yeah, if you want to. Yeah. You need your light. It's pretty dark in here. The old camera soaks the light up quite a bit. Crank that right open, we'll see. Well, maybe it'll adjust. This is the chemical. I've actually never been in here. This is Murray's chemical shed. Um, it's pretty dark. Yeah. Oh, that's a beauty. Yeah. So, I mean, you could... That's a beauty, mate. Does that go? Last time that was going, I think I was about seven years old. Eight years old, maybe. Gee, that'd be worth firing up. It's the old Briggs and Stratton three horse. What was the other one on that one there? Five. Five. So. This isn't as big. Yeah. Still. It would not take much to get it going, I don't think. Probably, it's probably still got lead fuel in it, actually. Lead fuel, yeah, the old fuel, eh? Tip that out and just start fresh. You smell it still? No, it's dead. Yeah, that'll be a good bucket. So if we can't get that other mode again, we could try this, but with that power, do you reckon it'd be a bit, bit not so oh, powerful, yeah. would it? The problem would be trying to get that off that motor. Yeah, yeah, it'll true. Because it would be pressed on the shaft and you yeah. need it, no, it would be too much of a fuck around. Yeah, oh, good to know you got this, eh? Be yeah. worth you trying to get it going yourself. They're bloody awesome motors, the old Briggs and Stratton. Yeah. Is that a Briggs as well? It looks like one, yeah, is it? Yeah, it's Briggs, yep. Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. And uh, if you want to know what... To look up all the manuals and stuff are online right if you want to look them up model type on the sticker here and there's some numbers on That's the handy, cowling isn't it? you look up those numbers and you'll yeah. find workshop manuals so if anything's wrong with that other car we, we could possibly burgle it off there eh? Mm, possibly oh this one's different oh this okay. one's got a bowl yeah uh this one's a gravity fed because your tank's up there yeah true and it comes down whereas that one's a uh, vacuum right type Oh, we'll see where we go. This is where I hang my pigs. Um, that's the old original hose off the pump. Yeah. Well, that's the end of it there, yeah. That's yeah. bloody handy to have. So um, that, that those, motor drives that pump. Yeah, those types of pumps are better at pushing than they are pulling. Right. So if you've got, say, like the um, water tank up there or something rather like that, you yeah. put, the, put that pump next to it. Right. And then if you want to feed something up the hill, it'll, it'll push it no problem. But if you put the pump up the hill yeah. and have the have the, uh, have the water down there to, to have a hard time because you could try and gravity f feed it. Yeah, right, true. You've got to like prime the pump. And yep. if you don't prime, yeah, problems. It's not good pullers. Good pushers, not good pullers. I've always been a pretty good puller. <laughs> Let's put out some heat already. Good. This bunny's been hanging for about two days since I shot it. I think it's one of the fattest rabbits I've actually ever, ever shot. Look at the hit him in there, that there. It's got heaps. So it's a little bit of shot up meat. Normally you, you want to take your shot off meat off the actual 
animal, whether it's venison or something, but it was just the spine. And I don't want to actually cut into those back straps, so I've left it on there. We might cut that little bit out later, there's a little bit there too. But otherwise, most of it's intact. We've got all the back legs, the undercuts, even a bit of chewing on the front, and the ribs. No, she's bloody good. That there is the lid off the camp oven I used to use, so I stuffed it, I put water in it and cracked it, but I've kept the lid because it's a great pan. Give it heaps, bud. Good old mate come over to get a bit of rabbit, which isn't trying to steal our offal. It's not for you, mate, you'll end up in the bloody spit you just do this. Keep selling it. Hey, fuck off! Fuck off! Yeah, look, mate. Yeah, no, buddy. No, buddy. Be careful solving that bloody rabbit. You come with me, mate. Leave it, Pace. Don't touch. There you go, man. Back in your home. See ya. Okay, yep. Yeah. Just rub it in. Give it a real good. Did you get the inside all right? Get a rib yeah, cage up. Yeah, fill, fill it up, mate. Fill it up. All in here. Look at that fat, holy shit. Some down here. All on the inside of the leg there. Give it heaps. Loads. Front legs as well. It's not very often I keep the front legs of a rabbit, but this guy's actually not too bad. It's looking good, this back leg needs some too. Give it heaps. Okay. No shortage. Still can do with more, there's still plenty. I'm really coat it. That's dark fat, one of my favourites. You see already that pan's nice and hot. It's not actually a pan, it's a lid, but it'll do perfectly. We're now going to just sear the outside as much as we can. Won't hurt a bit, mate. Just going to do you between the legs. Oh, that's what I wanted. Now we're talking. That's the first step. I can report that it smells delicious, this cooked fat. We've only seared it, though. It's still not cooked on the inside. But that's what I want to do is do the outside like that, just to uh, keep the moisture in because rabbit can dry out very easily. Now we're going to remove all the flesh that was like shot up meat. We can pick that out with our hands. The stuff here. You can see it's all been burned a little bit. I'm going to get rid of that. Let the uh, meat run out. It's just all here. Shot up meat. There's not a lot. That's our internal organs, uh, we're going to let Papa Joe deal with those because he knows how to do them. He'll do them in garlic in the pan. Going to put more salt on again. That duck fat will absorb that. And old Bruno's smelt something cooking now and he's come over to check out what's going on. I can see you Bruno. You know he's going to show up. More salt. Other side again. Here we go. Rabbits are very delicate meat. You're probably wondering what the pliers are doing there. That's what we're going to wire this thing up to next on a steel rod. Okay, stop there, bud. Righto. Keep on going. Oh, there's a bit of marrow in the end for you to chew on there, bud. Okay, we'll slide this down. Okay, but we're not just going to slide it down. We're going to do some work on it still because these can drop off later on. I'm going to secure them a twist like this and then we're going to force the legs this way like that there come around here with our wire go through the loop and uh, later on some of these bits of meat will possibly fall away we're just going to hold that bone in like this it's going to keep it nice and together you work on fire like this you work on about an hour per kg Come back this way again, and then we've got these legs here. And back through. That's it there. And we're going to do the same thing on the front. Front legs. And wire. Around here. Your thinnest bits are always the bits that are going to burn or fall off. And front legs are much thinner than them back so ultimately you want them to be in a cooler place and tie this guy up like a chicken they may they may come off and around this way this is just this is for the middle bit man just to be sure to be sure and put that back through here like this it looks cooked the meat but it's actually not 
Your pliers aren't very good, someone's been using them to cut their toenails with, I think. <laughs> I'm confident that's going to stay on right now, but you never know until you go over the fire. Put your hand above it and tell me what the heat's like, mate. Yeah, that's pretty much perfect. Pretty much perfect. Can you keep your hand there or not? Not really, no. Good, that's what we want. Vegetables on the pot, and I've got some dark fat, which I'm going to introduce now to the rabbit. What do you reckon, mate? Yeah, I think the more the merrier. The more the merrier? Yeah. Plenty of it. This is going to be good. Man, it smells good. It's duck fat with rabbit juice. Well, it's good. Yep, keep turning. Okay, good. Carry on. Carry on. Go right over now. Oh, that goes beautiful. Nice, give a full turn. That goes, keep going. Turn right over. Shit, that looks good. That's great. Nice. Gonna keep that for our sauce. Save all that vegetable juice, that's good. Yep. So Papa Joe's cut up some garlic. I'm gonna add that to our mushroom sauce with our onions. And water's starting to heat up. Daniel's cutting up liver and heart, I think, here. Well the smell of that garlic's nice, mate. Yeah, well, I've got mm. oh, Just as well you clean your fingernails before we did this, eh, bro? Wouldn't want any dirt on our tucker. Might kill us. Do you reckon with all the dirt you've had that you can't get COVID now? Oh, possibly. <laughs> Wouldn't reckon it though. Duck fat on. Kidneys and our heart first, and then we do a liver afterwards because liver doesn't need so long. These guys need a bit, bit longer. Papa Joe's doing another garlic now for their offal. This guy's good. Where's that garlic, Papa Joe? Come on, chug it up. Garlic, I'll get with that here, continue, bud. Put that close. Yeah, another side, please. There we go. Good man. Okay. Right, grab your liver. Good stuff. Here's our offal in the little camp oven. Reintroduced our onions and our mushrooms and our garlic. A bit of a stir. Butter makes everything taste better. Okay, we're going to get it a swirl. And the game change is going to be nice cream. Dan is going to add some cream. Put in, bro. It's good. I'm giving it the nice knife test. Oh, yeah, there's fat coming out of there already. You don't want to have blood. Look at that. Yeah, she's good. Perfect. Right, let's eat. Here's our sauce. We need a little bit more cream in there, bud. There she goes. Okay, so what we're going to do here is I'm going to pull this out. You're gonna hold the rabbit, okay? Okay, beauty. Right, whip that wire off. It looks good, and it smells good, it really does. Oh yeah, look at that there, man. Oh, ho, ho, ho. it's not like it's done in a slow cooker. She's gonna be chomping and chewing, bud. But check out this meat. Look at this. Ooh, like chicken. Check it out. Whoa, whoa. Oh yeah, now we're talking. You getting hungry? Fuck oh, yeah, I can smell yeah. that duck fat. Yeah, it's good, eh? Tastes like a piece of chicken, look at it. Look at it just falling. I'm dribbling. I'm absolutely dribbling doing this. So put our butter onto that. Mushroom and cream sauce with the offal. Oh, look at that, mate. You're dribbling. Fuck you, mate. Yeah. Looks damn good. There's plenty more to chew on too after this. Well the sun's going down and uh, none of us have tried this yet. Oh boo. Good chewing? Mm. It's actually really tender. It's not that chewy. Oh you got a bit of back strap, might mm. a bit of thigh. It's pretty delicious so. That mushroom sauce, get a bit of that sauce in it bud, you need that sauce in it, it's what really makes it taste wicked. You might still need some salt because we didn't salt the sauce. How's that going? Mm. You rate that? 
No, it's 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, happy days. Maybe we're 11. Oh man, it smells good. I'm, I'm breaking my fast for the first time in 23 hours with rabbit that was shot. Uh, this guy's hoeing into it so fast, it must be pretty good. <laughs> He's just hoeing through it. Oh, mm. mate. <laughs> Done good, bro. Mm. Holy shit. That I think that's, mm. that's the best rabbit I've actually ever done. I don't think I've ever done that good. Mm. Oh, and fat. Talk about fat. It's actually dark, but my phone still shows everything. Mmm. <laughs> yes, it was 11 out of 10. I agree. Don't throw away the liver. you got to keep that. That's probably mm. one of the best parts, if makes, not the best. Yeah. Makes the sauce taste great, doesn't mm, it? Fuck yeah. You don't get this in Auckland, do you? Mm. Not well at a high price. You know what's really funny, guys? I've got a brand new kitchen in the old farmhouse, and I'm out here doing what I've always done. I think it's going to be for guests, because I'm just... This is where I'm comfortable, and this is where I cook really good tucker. What's really nice is you get these outside bits, they're almost like a crackling. I think that's probably the best tuck I've had in a long time, brother. Me too, bro. Mm. The sun's gone down. Hey, thanks for joining us, guys. And I hope that your lockdown's treating you okay. We're doing really well. And we're thinking of all you people that are in a less fortunate situation than ourselves that are stuck in a city and don't have the the luxury and that's what it is of being able to shoot your own rabbit on your own bit of land and i'm very grateful for that I don't take it for granted i hope you're getting through this lockdown okay stay safe be good can't be good well be careful and we'll see you soon i'll try and do as many videos for you guys as i can during lockdown because i know it's hard i've been working around the clock i didn't finish the last edit till 1 30 this morning i was up again at five and i've been doing that since lockdown filming and editing because I know it's relieving the tension for some of you. That's that's really good if it does that. Hopefully it does that. See you later. Oh, I wish I could share this with you guys. I wish I could just have a few patrons join me or a few subscribers join me around the fire and, and eat some of this because it's just next level. No, probably not get that piece. It really is good. Isn't that a great sauce with the cream, eh? Yeah, that's my favourite part, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. I learnt that sauce when I was in Frankfurt in Germany in 1993. An Italian restaurant with my girlfriend Daniela Roch and she took me to this Italian restaurant and the steak was cream and mushroom and black pepper. Mm. I said to the chef, how do you do that? I cannot tell you, he's Italian. I said, look, I'm from New Zealand. I'll, uh, Probably never ever come back this way again, as it turned out I ate in that restaurant for the next 10, 12 years. Oh, you're here on holiday? I said, yeah, just a holiday. I was actually working, playing music. I said, okay, my friend, okay, my friend, come in here, in the kitchen. You're in the kitchen, and everybody's looking at me, you know, like mafia. It's okay, it's okay, from New Zealand. I said, I won't tell anybody. I just got to know how you make that sauce, that pepper steak sauce. Ah, the trick is in the mushrooms, the trick is in the garlic, the trick, and everything was a trick. It was pretty basic, really. Sorted some onions, some mushrooms. I can't actually tell you, because he told me I couldn't tell anybody, so I better stick to me. I'll stick to it. I promised him I wouldn't. I don't break promises, so I can't tell you. He's seen it now, but I didn't tell him. And it really does make it... Well, you saw what I did. You've yeah, watched the video. Watch well, closely, bro. Yeah, watch closely. <laughs> See you later. Oh, man. This is just making me so... Satisfied. It's amazing how many people cook rabbit, rabbit make it tough. Mm. Look at the tender ass, eh? Hey? It's pretty close to our consistency of like turkey. Ah, it's better than turkey. Mm, fuck yeah, mm. Well, I'm happy to get inside and edit this one. I'll let you run dogs and feed them, bro. Mm. Damn, it's a good tucker. It took all day to make and like I'm nearly like five minutes. Mmm. You did well, buddy. Thank you. Keeping the fire going, you did really well. Yeah, watch closely because um, with the mushroom sauce, it's something I've always been trying to make myself, but I've always kind of like, you know, not really known how to do it properly. See how I boiled a fish? 
Yeah. Not straight in the pan, you boil it first. Mm. Boil it, drain it off, and then into the camp oven. And the trick is not over boil it, just gentle simmer, so the goodness stays in, just to soften it up. Mm. And that way, you get that nice soft sauce like that. Ooh. Hey, it's been chewing on this rabbit still too. Oh, yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look at that. Yeah. Mm. Oh.